Hello, I'm uh, right in the middle of doing something and I wanted to uh, find my mouse cursor just show you some stuff. So this is C++, I've added a main and we could do something so see out hello world and if we ran it it would just open and close instantly and it build ta-da and voila program run and closed. Recently I've been doing some stuff in binary and not many people work in binary just from scratch anymore and what I was trying to do or having to do was working a mask so this mask is integer is this is 32 bits in size so really it's represented as 1516 32 bits so if we set this to the number one this binary bit is on if we set this to the number two that binary bit is on and if we set it to three those binary bits are on and there was a bit of a conjecture as to how would be best to do this in a, in a piece of modern code um, specifically we wanted to um, I wanted a mask that would represent the state of an object so I know this I know the object's been initialized I know it's been seen perhaps I know it's been transmitted this was actually for a, a protocol a network protocol and we wanted a status and it wasn't an unsigned uh, um, integer it was actually just an unsigned char or a byte okay so let's define a byte using byte equals unsigned char this gives us eight bits okay so if we wanted to represent one we would have seven zeros with a one for two it would be six zeros one zero okay and you can count this so one two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, etc, etc, etc. You can count binary fairly easily on your fingers. Okay, so we wanted it to go transmitted and then the bit to move up and say received or acknowledged and then it to say replied and then it to say, you know, some other value and the bit would shift up error would be the highest bit and so I want to say transmitted so I have a byte B nothing has been set nothing has been set and if we see out this value we get something odd because it's an unsigned character so let me also just get a value we can scientific seeing uh, and uh, oh, typing and then we'll include string as well let's build that uh, I only got the thing the C in at the bottom just so it pauses for us so there we go so we don't see it we don't see the C out this was the the first problem well that's because you're trying to outpoint output a character and character zero is blank so it wasn't always showing so you need to cast it to something that will display in our case we we're going to cast it to an integer so we use a new static cast to integer of byte now when we run it we see our zero there it is there's the zero but it isn't zero it's a binary bit mask so immediately for debugging purposes I used bit set okay so standard bit set 8 bits display initialize with the value of B okay and then I can just output L display and see what we get and we get the binary bit set we get the bit set the actual output that we want comes straight out of it and if we set the first bit we can output and see the first bit so the next piece we needed to do if I just put a bar on the screen we 
was move that bit along. So every time some function happened to my bit, I wanted to shift it left. I wanted to move that status bit left. So right now that byte tells me that I've transmitted this packet to the other side. I'm waiting for some acknowledge. When it acknowledges, I get the same value back for the reply packet, the ACK packet. I would simply do this and then output the same value again. So again, L display equals B and we output the display value just so we can see that it changed. And you'll see that the 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 byte, the bit within the byte has moved left one. This double chevron equals has shifted the bit one to the left. And we can then do a loop. Um, so rather than do this just once, we can do a bit of for loop. So for int i is zero, i smaller than size of b. And I know there's eight bits, so we'll do it times eight. Uh, really, we know b is one byte, so it's one times eight. It's a bit superfluous. But for my coding standard, I use that and generally put it into a const expression so it's worked out at compile time. But we know that that's the size, and we pre-increment pre rather the i because it's quicker than a post-increment. Um, but what we want to do is shift that bit by one each time shift the bit by one, and then assign display to the value, and see how display. So now we're going to get, if I can type, a loop with that bit marching leftwards. So this is the initial value, and then we see it move left, and then left again, and left again, and left again, and left again, until it wraps back round to zero. So I started with the bit in position, so there's seven places we can move that bit to. Not eight, there's seven other bits it can be in, seven other representations for a unique bitmap. So the bitmap literally moves left and wraps around to zero. So the eighth time we do this, we've shifted it off. We don't shift it back on. We've shifted it off and it's gone, disappeared, vanished, never to be seen again. It's carried out. Um, and that's very useful if you're going to look at my uh, code for processor uh, emulation when you carry out a, a, a bit. So that's using bit set and that's using shift left. Very rarely seen nowadays. In fact, I did have someone quite senior ask me, what does that do? Uh, surprised me, but they asked. So let's do this again. Okay, let's take the whole thing again, and then let's set the byte back to 1 for our second run. And for our bar, let's have some nice stars so we can just see that we're somewhere else. Okay, so there we are. There's our stars. What happens if we shift by 2? Well, instead of moving one place, it will move two places. So by the time we get to the fourth location, we'll be out of bits and it will disappear. There we go. So it's moved by two, moved by two, might be gone. You see? And this is very useful. This is uh, extremely useful. Now, the bit set is a little bit more useful. Okay, so we'll take those all of those bytes off the screen. And we'll get rid of that byte, and we'll just say that that bit set is the, is the byte. Rather than using the byte, the bit set itself is the byte. So L display, and then we display it again. Let's see what we get. We get it shifted by one. But the bit set is a lot more easy to manipulate than the byte. So let's let's look at a byte. Okay. Let's say in olden terms we wanted to turn the third bit on dynamically. We go well b or equals ox o four. 
and then we would have to do std c out static cast int b end the line and we should stop it debugging when I did this. So we can see that four goes into that. That sets the fourth bit. Okay, and if we then do um, standard bit set eight bits other and then make it B std C out uh, L other and line rebuild it. We will see that the third bit has been set by this. And it has, so the third bit has been set. But this is very obscure code. Um, and yes, you can nowadays um, in C Go. Oh, oh, oh. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, I believe. Something like that. Oh, we can't in this one, maybe. But there's a suffix to make it a, a binary, you know, a binary value rather than. Does that work? No, it doesn't work. It thinks it's 64. It thinks it's 100, which is 64. Um, so you could actually or it with the binary value manually. But again, you know, this is much more common in people's minds. And to unset the byte, it's tilde. Uh, it's ampersand equals inverse o x four to to set the byte and unset the byte. So we've set the byte, unset the byte. It's back to zero again. This is old code. If you see this, I consider it old. It's fast, but it's hard to maintain, and that's my problem with code like that. So we go back to modern code. We we get rid of this again. We go back to the bit set. Well, how would this bit set set the third bit? How did it do that? OX04. Well, you go L display 3 equals 1. And now the third bit, the third bit is set. It's actually weirdly not right, but whatever. That's because I've, shift, I've shifted it a little bit there. So I've done the bit there and I've shifted it there. Let's uh, take that off. So that's just confusing us. So we initialize it so that the first bit is set, and when we set the fourth bit, bit three, so the fourth bit is set. So bit zero, bit one, bit two, bit three. Bit three, very simple. Um, oh, so I did it with four, didn't I? Four would be bit two. OX04 previously will be now bit two, look. It's as simple as that. That, to me, is a lot more maintainable. And if you give using bitmask this uh, a meaningful name it, it becomes even more maintainable so I use bitset wherever I can I prefer it and if I want to shift a bit around rather than set that I, mean, I could remember that I've set bit zero and then set bit one and then set bit two and then set bit three so the for loop thing that we did would be four int i equals naught i smaller than eight plus plus i we output each one and at the end of each one we go display i equals one and that will slowly set each bit in the loop so we've set each bit up as we go uh, we actually need one more there but you, you see what I mean um, or of course you can go display shift left equals one and that will just shift the bit up the pattern you see so it's moving the bit left 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 slowly up the line very useful for doing repeated patterns or if you're scrolling some information very useful for scrolling information is, is these left shift and of course there is a right shift just as much so L um, if i greater than 2, just to keep it in display, display shift left equals 2. So every time we move left, it'll move back, and there you go. It sort of stays where it is. We go up and down a hump. Um, I've used that technique, by the way, and inverted it to make small undulations in the ground for things, for procedurally generated terrain. It's very useful for that. 
So that's bits, bit sets. That's how I like to work with them. More maintainable code. I always prefer using standard bit set. You've got a whole bunch of support with this. So you can have uh, the display or the bit set here has a to string function. It has a to long function, a long, long function. Um, you've got all the standard operators, uh, exclusive or, or inverse. Etc. Etc. Et Everything's built in for you. You don't need to worry about it. You can flip individual values. You can check if any bit within the whole set is set, or you can set them all, etc. Etc. Or, or, or check if they're all set. It's a very useful thing. Far more useful than reinventing the wheel every time. Far more useful than setting and unsetting individual bits yourself. With worst case other hexadecimal masks that you're making up or shifting around or losing. And the great thing is that if you're taking a bit set from a different size, let's say instead of a nice round byte, uh, you've got 12. Done. Done. And it's range checked and it, you know it works. And if it goes beyond it, it'll tell you something daft has happened. And you can output information and go, oh, oh it's, it, I need more bits, or oh, I need 14 bits in this one. And yes, it doesn't pack well. Your struct, if you're going to transmit this, would have to turn it into a byte, perhaps, and transmit it in your network packet yourself. But that's easy enough. Okay? So, bit sets. Prefer them to standard bytes for better code. That's my thing for the day. And uh, if you've never used shifting, it's quite useful. See you soon.